It's our First NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank. First NBC Bank is a proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. I'm Ken Traham with Lenny Van Gilder, and it's a high school wrestling weekend. The state championships in wrestling taking place in Bossier City at Century Tell Center, and it should be a great competition because it looks like a dogfight in each one of the three divisions. In Division One. Local schools are the powers. Brother Martin, Holy Cross, Jesuit St. Paul's will duke it out. In Division II, three-time defending champion Turlings Catholic will battle Archbishop Rummel along with Live Oak and St. Louis Catholic in Division III. Dewa Sal will be there again trying to defend their championship against perennial power Bruley in particular, who stands to be a prime challenger. So good stuff. Again, it's a shame it's a long way from New Orleans, but... The people there do a good job, and it should be a wonderful weekend. Yeah, what's unfortunate is that just about every team you just named is along the I-10 corridor, but yet it's being held in the northern part of the state. There, It will still be a good atmosphere. It will be a great competition, but obviously it's an event that was held in New Orleans for many years. Perhaps it's due to return here at some point, but well, it's it, as you mentioned, it should be some outstanding competition. I think things will go down. You know, to the end, uh, in all three classes, or all three divisions, I should say, uh, on down to the finals on Saturday night to decide who actually walks away with the team hardware. Yeah, two home teams, Bozier teams, uh, Airline and Division One, Parkway and Division Two, certainly will fare well in this event, but there aren't very many schools from North Louisiana that participate, as Lenny mentioned. Follow full coverage at sportsnola.com and check out Will Pennegy's story on wrestling and to be or not to be a champion when you make that decision and what's most important to your program. It's a good story. We hope you'll have a chance to read it. If you read the tea leaves surrounding the New Orleans Pelicans, they don't look good. They're on the road now pretty much for the next month, more or less, and they hit the road off of another bad loss. It's one thing to lose to a good team in Utah, but the way they got beat was just horrendous. They got smoked and just blown out of their own building before a sparse crowd against a team wearing their former uniforms wearing their former white home uniforms as you and I grew up watching in the 70s and they've gone back to the old logo and you know looked like looked like the old days of Jazz Mataz with Pistol Pete throwing uh throwing passes and Truck Robinson grabbing rebounds but that's a uh, that's a long time ago uh, as we know and the, the the current iteration of New Orleans professional basketball team uh you know is struggling right now and I think they've got to make some decisions uh, in terms of what they did. You know, we heard the trade rumors early in the week, and they've got to make a decision on what it is they want to do. Do they want to try to acquire some assets and be sellers at the deadline? Are they seeing an opportunity to maybe go get some things at the deadline and make a push for that eighth spot and maybe set themselves up as well for the future? So, you know, look, let's, you know, th- this this four-game road trip, especially look at my mind, the first two, Minnesota-Sacramento are winnable games on the road. I think those two kind of really set the tone for what may be to come here over the next couple of weeks. Well, they pay Phoenix on the road, too. Of course, Sacramento went Boston at home last night, so uh, nothing comes easy, especially for a Pelicans team that's poor on the road. So stay tuned. And by the way, if you're going to go for the future, Lopez is a no-go. He's a good player, but he's 28. He's been there, done that, and probably wouldn't be too motivated to be here. Remember, his brother was once here. And then in addition to that, Okafor, he's a younger player, 21, that you could control. So maybe something there, but a lot of people are interested in him. If my book, you build for the future, not for now. Get your draft picks, get your young players, build that way. That's the model for a small market franchise, a franchise that's going to have trouble keeping any significant players after their original contracts expire. The good thing about the NBA as opposed to the NFL is that it's it favors the team who's got somebody under contract. That's why you were able to sign Anthony Davis to a long-term deal because you can control him for an extra year and you can offer him more money. That's the good thing. Uh, the bad thing is you've been, you know, when's the last time this team won a playoff game? You know, you got to go back quite a few years. So that's the, you know, that that's the bad part of it. Yeah, we mentioned prep wrestling, of course. Prep soccer deep into the playoffs now. And you can follow full coverage at sportsnola.com. Check out the daily scores and results with wraps around those schedules and results. And, of course, as always, a lot of local teams, both boys and girls, alive into the second round and quarterfinals as we speak. Yep, and that's, uh, you know, North Shore, South Shore, 
into the bayou. I mean, it, there's a lot of good soccer played in these parts, a lot of great action uh, to go check out in terms of uh, in terms of high school soccer as they you know, head towards Ted Gormley in the finals in a couple of weeks. Yeah, looking forward to that. Prep basketball, of course, continuing. And again, full coverage at sportsnola.com as they march closer to the playoffs. Hope people had a chance to check out the Chalmette St. Paul's game and a special performance by Mitchell Robinson. 44 points, 17 rebounds, five block shots, and... By the way, he made four three-pointers in the game. It was the best I've ever seen him play, and it was awe-inspiring to watch it. Headed to Western Kentucky, and uh, well, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, of course, the broadcast is archived. Uh, go check out Ken's game story right there at the top. You will see the archive broadcast. You can go back and watch just what a talent uh, this young man is. You know, as you start talking about the, the best high school players to come out of New Orleans, does he go in that discussion? I think the list starts with probably someone like a Randy Livingston. But that's for another day. That that, that We could do the, the entire update on, on that discussion. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Randy Livingston, from a high school perspective, although from an overall perspective and accomplishment, you'd certainly have to think about some other people like Rick Roby in particular who comes to mind. Uh, if you want to count DJ Augustine, you certainly could count him. But there's a lot of guys that you can certainly look at that have accomplished a lot over an extended period of time. So it's going to be interesting to say the least. And, of course, no news to report on the Saints front at this point. It's all somewhat quiet at this point in time, waiting for free agency to start and, of course, waiting to see what they're going to do with training camp. Some rumors out there about Millsaps possibly coming back into the picture. But that's still to be determined. Still to be determined. Probably the next big thing on the calendar is the scouting combine coming up at the end of February uh, where they'll get a chance to talk to a lot of these players who will be draft eligible, uh, watch them work out, you know, get the, uh, what do they call it, the underwear Olympics kind of thing, see what, you know, see how they measure out and see, uh, you know, see all, all the things that they want to put numbers to uh, before the draft at the end of April. And college basketball continuing no good news for Tulane or LSU LSU at least played respectable at Kentucky Tulane loses again UNO battling for a Southland Conference title and they have a big game Thursday at McNeese and then of course they've got to continue to win if they want to have a chance to win that regular season title no doubt and a tough one on Saturday at Southeastern a team that's been very good at home this year obviously it's a short drive to Hammond if you want to go check that one out and finally college baseball and bad blow for LSU they've lost their cleanup hitter for the season yeah, and uh, you know that is a tough spot. A first-team All-SEC guy in Jordan who will uh, be down for the year with a knee injury. Uh, one interesting thing: LSU released their their uniforms for the year. They are going to wear throwbacks against Tulane this year, which I think are fabulous-looking throwback uniforms with the with the L. The, you know, going back and inspired by the uh, the the uniforms that were first worn at Alec Box Stadium back in the the old version of the box back in the 30s. They are they are some great looking uniforms along with the traditional ones that we've seen you know, LSU wear from year to year. So college baseball is close. Looking forward to it. Lenny, it's always a pleasure. Have a great weekend. Yeah, one more college baseball plug, by the way, while the Division I schools open up the following week, Delgado opens up this weekend. You're looking for something to do. It's going to be a great day on Saturday. Go check out the Dolphins. Top 10 in the nation once again. There you go. Loyal also opened last weekend, swept Rust College. So, Again, you can read it all at sportsnola.com. That's our first NBC Bank weekend preview brought to you by First NBC Bank. First NBC Bank is a proud sponsor of sportsnola.com. Have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. You have a good weekend as well. Until Monday, God bless you all.